Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over market conditions. I'm gonna go over some market conditions, usually that involves ratios. Uh, I'm gonna go over the copper to gold ratio and show you that it's a leading indicator uh, for the 10 year yield. So let's jump in here. I'll show you what I've got in market conditions, which is mainly ratios uh, and, and other things. So here's the 10 year yield. Uh, and I'll show you what's kind of perplexing here, but we've got the 10 year yield. It is declining since April of 2021. We've been in this declining mode. And sometimes what that means is that people are scared of something, of a crash or, or something like that. And usually if the banks know that something's going down, they'll buy the bonds and, and, and send rates lower because there's a high demand for bonds uh, that people are afraid. But we do have kind of this downward movement. We've got a wick at the bottom. We've come up and then the selling pressure seems a little muted. We could move on higher here. We've got copper and I'm showing copper here. This is one of our Dr. Copper indicators. This was the day that they were trying to manipulate. Um, China came out and said they were selling some of their reserves in copper. We've seen the sell-off here. We're kind of regaining some strength and I think we're gonna move on higher. I don't think they can hold this thing down. Now the copper to gold ratio, this means some things. Usually when copper is outperforming gold, which this is going up, we've, we're in this nice big uptrend. We've been moving sideways for the copper to gold ratio a little bit, but if this continues higher, I think what you're going to see is the 10 year yield move higher. Copper to gold ratio is a leading indicator uh, of the 10 year yield. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like. This is the kind of from 2013 to 2019, the US 10 year yields this dark blue line. The light blue line is the copper to gold ratio. When the ratio starts to move higher, you'll see the 10 year yield start to move with a lagged indicator. Now I'm not saying that the, the actual magnitude of the move is the same, but the direction's the same. So as this started to bottom and move higher, this bottomed a little bit later and then started to move higher. And then you can start to see this started to come down and this would follow it. So the copper to gold ratio is a leading indicator of what the 10 year yield is going to do. So if we look back, we've seen this kind of pop higher. It's pulled back a little bit. And I think this is going to continue higher uh, for a little bit, which is then going to push yields higher. Uh, the dollar is, we, we, we came in this ascending wedge, kind of squeezed up into this corner and have broken to the downside. So we have a short-term pullback uh, in the dollar. Uh, we've got platinum to gold ratio. Looking at this ratio, platinum broke to the upside of the downtrend. We're back testing right now. And I think we'll move on higher at some point, uh, creating an uptrend, which means that platinum will be outperforming gold, signaling that stocks are not the spot to be in, commodities are. Here's the gold to copper ratio again, just reversed. We did break out of this uptrend line to the downside, meaning that copper is outperforming gold. Uh, we've got the gold to oil ratio. Uh, oil outperforms when this ratio declines, and we're right there at support line with the ratio. Uh, if we see any further decline in this ratio, it means that we have a breakout and that uh, we'll probably see a vast outperformance of oil over gold. Gold to silver ratio, you can see this guy coming on up. It broke this uptrend line and massively outperformed in 2011. Uh, for silver, vast outperformance. Uh, we're still coming on up. We broke to the downside here in 2020, and we're kind of just moving around. Hopefully, we continue to compress lower over time, meaning that silver is outperforming gold. This is the XAU to gold ratio. This is the mining, gold and silver index mining companies. We got this big long downtrend uh, in 2016. We kind of broke up, then we broke higher, and then we just got to break this high again. Uh, and I think we're going to be in an uptrend for the ratio. We got the 50 day moving over the 200 day. I think this looks fantastic for a gold and silver mining index, like the mining stocks. Uh, and I think they'll all perform gold. XAU to gold. This is the ratio zoomed in. We've kind of got this pullback from here to here, and I think it ended, and we've got nice big up days and small down days all through here. I think the ratio is going to continue to go up, meaning that the mining companies or gold and silver index is going to outperform gold itself. So I would rather be in the miners. Global X copper miners ETF, kind of going over some copper stuff here. 
We've got the blue lines here, which is a pullback. It's in pullback mode through here. And now we see a bunch of up days and small down days. I think we're going to pull higher here. It looks good. And we also broke the downtrend line. Here's a COPX uh, on a big, bigger scale. We got the uptrend line that it broke to the downside. And then we just broke this downtrend line to the upside. So hopefully we can get some momentum to the upside again. REMX broke its kind of resistance line here. Nice big cup and handle pattern that broke to the upside. Hopefully we can get moving and move a, a good distance higher. But it looks fantastic. Uh, REMX kind of zoomed in. This was the pattern that we broke here. It kind of came down, going sideways, broke the, the trend line to the upside, and we're moving on up. So it looks good. Uh, GDX, the, another ETF that I that I follow. These are just all ETFs. Up Uptrend line. We broke a downtrend line. So we broke the downtrend line. We pulled back to the uptrend line. Or, sorry, uptrend line. So we broke the downtrend, pulled back to the uptrend, pulled back to the downtrend. Now breaking back up. So that, this looks good. If we can break this $40 mark, I think you're going to see substantially higher prices. OIH, another uh, ETF. This is uh, Van Eck Vectors Oil Services. We got this downtrend line. We haven't really broken anything yet. We've got this big kind of reverse head and shoulders pattern that's still playing out. Uh, and I think when we break this at about 250, uh, you're, you're going to see a big move higher. Still putting in the reverse head and shoulders. Another reverse head and shoulders playing out here uh, for XLE, but we got to break this downtrend line. We break this downtrend line and break this reverse head and shoulders. You're going to see a big move higher uh, in XLE, which is the energy select sector. Energy still has a ton of, of potential to go higher. URNM, the Uranium North Shore Global Uranium ETF, uptrend line. We broke through the uptrend line, back tested, and then we're moving on higher. And I still think we've got good support underneath this, and I still think we can move on higher. It looks like we got a short term little downtrend break that's occurring right now. That looks good. Uh, I just threw in a couple of mutual funds. If you guys like mutual funds, Fidelity Select Materials portfolios in this uptrend channel. And we've been bouncing between the upper and lower channel lines. So that one looks pretty good. I don't know if I'd buy it all the way up here, but uh, it's, it's going in an upward channel. Uh, OGMYX, this is one I own in my uh, 401k. Step one's to break the downtrend. So that's step one. Step two is, the, is a high. We've come down and created basically a sideways pattern, and then we broke up. So we're in a new uptrend for OGMYX since the early 2020s. Uh, I bought this kind of in here. I bought it in here. I've been basically buying it all through here, hoping for the break. I did get caught in this big sell-off, but I continued to buy it. And I think we're in an uptrend, uh, which is looking great. EK Wax is another one that I own in my 401k. We've been going in this downtrend line. And we got a big change here with this huge pop higher. And then we came back. So step one, step two, we came back. And then we broke it to the upside and we're kind of back testing. So I've been buying a lot in here. Been buying and buying and buying uh, for this move higher, which I think is going to come. And I, we're verifying this with the XAU to gold ratio. And that's how I'm playing this. I think we're going to see a large move higher in the precious metals mining companies in the beginning and middle of a bull market uh, that's coming up. So I think we're positioned very well, at least I am, for this move of what I think is coming. Now, I think the opposite, I, I'm just showing this to show you the opposite case. This is the NASDAQ composite. Uh, we have an ascending uh, triangle pattern that's that's occurring right now. And I, I, I was calling that we're probably putting in a top a couple months ago. And I think we still are. It just takes a long time for it to happen. These things don't take months. They take, you know, years to develop uh, sometimes. And what I'm seeing is this could be, you know, this could be a full year before this develops. But I think we're getting closer. What I'm seeing are these, I got the arrows point at these large sell-off days, large selling pressure all through here. I don't see the buying pressure stepping in and pushing this higher anywhere in this triangle. There are no massive up days anywhere in this triangle. They're all big selling pressure. 
one, two, three, four, these four, one, two, three, four, five days selling pressure here. We've got one here, one there. We've got some selling pressure in here coming on that's pretty heavy. We've got another heavy selling pressure and another selling heavy pressure, but it, we are contracting up into the corner of this wedge. And I think, I mean, we'll see which way this thing breaks, but I'm just seeing heavy selling pressure through here. That's what I'm noting. I'm seeing the pressure of selling. And if we see interest rates, if copper goes higher, that copper to gold ratio, if that copper to gold ratio goes higher and the 10 year yields follow, this guy's going to fall. It, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how high it's got to go for the yields, but yields going higher is a definite headwind for the NASDAQ. If we're seeing selling pressure over the last year, where we've got big down days and it's struggling to move higher. It takes a lot more days to get back up. It means the sellers are getting tired. The buyers are going to win here, or the sellers are going to win here, I think. And it's just a matter of time for this to break to the downside. We saw Amazon got hit pretty hard today. AMZN uh, for earnings. And if we continue to if we continue to see inflation go up, if we see dollar going down, if we break that 90, 89, 90 level on the dollar going down, we see rates go higher. I, I just think this is going to be a, a bad spot to be in. Anything that's technology related and anything that has a high PE ratio. Uh, it's definitely going to be running against a very strong, stiff headwind. Uh, if you guys like this analysis, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.